this is a, a beautiful sunny Wednesday afternoon although I don't know when I'm going to be able to upload this because my video from Monday is uploading and it's taking forever but never mind it's nice to, to do one and I thought outside would be really good for a change I don't know how it's going to turn out because behind you we've got a very busy 40 mile an hour road so yeah um, at least you can see the beautiful countryside around me hopefully um, finished objects first of all uh, I'll remind you about Jack this is the hat that I made it was going to originally be for Vera but it's now for Jack because it fits him that was in chunky yarn I decided to make one for Vera and it's in double knit and this is how this turned out I didn't realise when I last showed you this while it was a work in progress how close it was to finishing and there's the crown so it's actually turned out really well. Um, the only disadvantage is it's a manly colour in Vera's big colour. She's complaining now. Sorry. Jack's jealous. <laughs> he likes them colours. Um, my shawl is in progress. I'll show you it. So there we go. I'm finally... So, and I'm decreasing properly now. Although I have to say, it's very confusing about how that's turned out, what I've had to do, because what I did to increase, no, that's not true. Um, when I first started the very first seven rows to set up the pattern, I was missing some stitches. I'd get to the end of a row and think, I've run out of stitches. How is that possible? And the whole turning chain business became very clear for me. And I started to realise, because of the diagram, how to use the turning chain. I never realised before, I was always missing it. And for certain stitches, I would always go into the very first stitch when people would say, no, you must skip the first stitch, go into the second, go into the turning chain. I always thought I was doing the turning chain. It wasn't. What I thought was the turning chain was the top of the first stitch. Um, so I figured that out, thanks to the pattern, the actual picture. And then I started increasing and everything was gone fine, no problem. To decrease, I was doing the decreases, but it wasn't decreasing, it was flat. And the only way I found that I can actually make some ways of not, uh, like, decreasing and not remaining flat was to not go in the turning chain again. I can't understand it. This is where sometimes crochet eludes me. There you go. I've also started just messing around with some yarn. Um, <laughs> this is a, a foundation half double crochet row. I'm just messing about. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I'm not following a pattern. I'm messing about and I'm basically fitting it on myself and seeing what happens. <laughs> I'll let you know if I succeed. And it's one of these things where you have a pair and I might not, I might run out of steam by the time I get to do the second. The other thing I'm working on, well, I'm not really working on it, I'm messing about. I just decided to do a flat panel on the Addy King. I did that until I ran out of yarn. Um, this is in worsted weight and I'm, I've got another one on the machine right now in double knit and I'm going to work about the same amount and I really want to see the difference. Um, I've counted 80 rows between this marker and this marker so I'm going to count 80 rows on the double knit and just see if there's any difference in size or anything like that because this actually has shrunk since yesterday it's like relaxed into shape um, the reason why I want to do this is because I have the Addy King pattern book and I've, I've, I've looked through and I've seen some patterns that I would like to make, perhaps. And none of these yarns are familiar, but when I've sourced them on the internet, I've found out their yarn weights are equivalent to worsted. Which is, I find it quite annoying actually, because worsted isn't so readily available here in the UK. Now, yes, I do have some Red Heart, and yes, I do have some Karen Simply Soft. However, when I bought um, the amounts of those, 
they're all in single colours so you can't do any big projects they're all going to be small projects whereas double knit is more readily available for me and I can get larger quantities of double knit in the same colour so I'm hoping that I can still make whatever it is in the pattern book even if it is listed as double knit, um, worsted I can still do it in double knit but I just have to see how it looks really that that's that's the experiment um, that's all there is at the moment um, I hope that traffic noise isn't too much for you it's actually quite light at the moment but it, it will get busier and it does have busy times um, have you seen this bought one of these oh it was a few weeks ago now it's a yarn cutter what well, says Japan on there made in Japan and it's by Clover um, and it's got the blade circular blade running around the inside and each point here has a bit to put the yarn in and snip it and it's got a hole through there so you could put it on like a pendant it looks really good I, I just like the things I'm terrible the gadget freak me anything um, to play with I just oh, terrible I have to have it actually I should show you that um, the tank shouldn't I I'll um, dismount the camera from the tripod and I'll show you the tank in our garden, um, the sewage treatment plant that's come up and wedged. This is the tank that popped up out the garden. We do actually normally have some decking over there so you can't see it and the decking is in that part of the garden there behind that lattice fence there. Um, well, it can't go back on because that the way the tank has popped up and it's wedged under that concrete at the back behind it so that's the reason why we don't have use of a normal toilet um, this that's going on over here so if you can zoom in no that's zooming out sorry that table there my husband's made it and it's going to be a veggie patch um, we did have like something underneath that which was larger but the problem is we've got an awful lot of rabbits coming into the garden and even the farmer who um, usually has cattle on this field which surrounds the house and well the fields beyond there and over there and over here he has several fields I don't know how many he has anyway he occasionally does lamping in the evenings on his quad bike and even he can't control the rabbit population so yeah they've made a right mess of our lawn as well there's like um, holes every, everywhere so we figured since we want to grow veggies the best thing we can do is raise raise a veggie bed um, we can't have it on the floor so that's why it's going to be at a height so it's a, a big thing and my husband's currently um, sieving the soil to get all the stones out and there's a compost bin there which has two years worth of compost in which should be ready and ripe for that and one extra since that was full we've had that one since we moved in um, all ready to be used yeah we had the greenhouse there last year we used we made um, we grew tomatoes and chili plant so yeah we hope to do more but yeah that's it then yeah not a very pleasant sight that isn't it oh, i can't wait till that's back in the ground we've got the deck over it again <laughs>